Hello everyone, I'm urologist Omer Erdemakaya. I have not done a video on anabolic steroids in a long time. Today's topic is oxandrolone. Oxandrolone is an oral anabolic steroid that was identified in 1962. It is a dihydrotestosterone derivative that has been sold for about 60 years. If we look at its chemical structure, it is alkylated at the 17th carbon, so it is a known liver toxic anabolic agent. The purpose of this anabolic steroid and it was manufactured was to promote growth and development in children. In adults, it was manufactured to help the body maintain mass in case of cancer weakness, AIDS-related weakness. It lost its popularity in the 1990s and came back on the agenda in the 2000s with the rise of AIDS and HIV. Oxandrolone is not manufactured in Turkey, but abroad. We know it is liver toxic, but its liver toxicity is weaker than other oral anabolic steroids. There are long-term studies on children and adults. It has been found to have no side effects in children with burns greater than 30% and is not liver toxic when used in small doses such as 0,1 mg per kilogram for almost two years. In studies of about three months in adults with HIV, no liver toxicity was observed at a daily dose of 20 mg, while liver toxicity was observed at doses of 40 mg and 80 mg. It is one of the most commonly used drugs for doping purposes, abused in sports. Considering its anabolic and androgenic index, its anabolic index is 5 to 6 times higher than testosterone, while its androgenic effect is lower than testosterone. It is a preferred product among women as an anabolic agent. Apart from that, it has the side effects of classic anabolic steroids. They increase especially with high-dose long-term use. These side effects in women, it has side effects like clitoral enlargement, voice thickening, increased hair growth. In men, it has side effects such as baldness, male pattern hair loss, acne, and oily skin. It also puts pressure on the pituitary gland. In studies done on this, it did not put much pressure on LH and FSH at a dose of 20 mg per day in HIV patients. However, a decrease in testosterone of 45% in 3 months was noted at 40 mg and 66% at 80 mg. Of course, if these doses are taken for a long period of time, sexual unwillingness and erectile dysfunction with testosterone decrease may occur. And the person may need to have PCT period for this. The fact that it is not aromatized with estrogen, has very low progesterogenic or prolactogenic effects, and can be taken orally makes the drug popular in some ways. Honestly, in my experience, I have not come across oxandrolone in patients with erectile dysfunction or severe drop in testosterone after taking anabolic steroids. It was mostly DECA, Trenbolone or other stronger anabolic steroids. I have not heard much about oxandrolone, But since the side effect profile of oxandrolone is weak, it has been found to be used off-label in protein powders or supplements in studies conducted overseas. It is highly abused in this regard because it has a weak side effect profile among oral anabolic steroids. Apart from that, oxandrolone is an anabolic androgenic agent that has been used for a long time. Thank you for your attention.